Hi, this is Jackson. No, no finance. Today is October 29th. There's a uh, big reports coming out that small businesses could be running out of cash uh, before Christmas time. So that is a huge concern for American small businesses. And Shopify is now offering up to $2 million for their financing product. So they've increased the total amount that they can link to small businesses. Other news, it, interesting, the Sacramento Kings, the NBA team, are partnering with a London sports marketing firm to engage small businesses in the Sacramento community. And also helping these small businesses, where there's a lot of, you know, a lot of NFL, NBA teams, pro sports, they focus on big businesses because that's who pays for a lot of their tickets and sponsorships and advertising. So small businesses have been left behind. But in this story, they're going to go over how uh, beneficial it is to engage the community through small businesses. So that's an exciting story to talk about today. Uh, but first, let's talk about the most troubling news where one in five, it's reported that one in five small and medium sized businesses could be out of cash by Christmas time. And notice how they said medium sized too, not just small businesses. This is a report by online financing service, STEN, S-T-E-N-N. Now they did a survey that was conducted for August 29th through September 5th, sampling 250 founders, owners, and CEOs who lead businesses with at least $2.5 million in annual revenue with anywhere from one employee to 500 employees. So there's a big gap there. Uh, but according to the report, 61.6 million Americans are employed by small businesses. One in five businesses with one to 500 employees have one to five months cash reserves in case of emergency. So if there's any bad months in between now and Christmas, so they're saying that a lot of small businesses may not be able to operate and they have to shut down before Christmas. Four in five businesses said they were months away from scaling their businesses and increasing revenue. So while one in five are only have one to five months of operating cash in their reserves, Four and five said that they were, you know, pretty close to scaling. And so was, if, if Christmas does go well, they'll have extra money to increase their budgets, put more into uh, expanding their business and growing their revenues. So in the conflicting reports, I've also read some reports recently. Consumers, they think that they're going to spend $85 billion less than they did last year due to inflation, just higher rising costs in groceries and uh, gasoline has really put a strain on their budgets and the cash that they have. You know, just in their bank accounts is a lot less than they had last year. So they're much well, uh, less willing to spend money towards Christmas gifts and, you know, shopping for the holidays this year. So I've seen that. I've also seen how most small businesses though are still feeling optimistic about Christmas. I think, I think an important note though is too, like even when uh, shoppers may not want to spend as much during Christmas, they're still going to support a lot of those small businesses. You know, they're still going to go out and, and shop and, and, you know, not everyone is just getting everything offline off Amazon or off, you know, the department store's websites. They're still going to be small businesses and supporting small business uh, during the holiday season. So maybe that's why small businesses are, are still feeling good about Christmas time. But uh, let's hope that, you know, shoppers continue to spend as, as much as they did last year, if not more. And hopefully these reports are wrong. But again, this is coming from uh, surveys from QuickBooks and they do, you know, they have expansive data that they look at. So it's something to watch. And in East Liverpool, Ohio, They've established a small business hub with a $650,000 funding from the SBA. The SBA will do this from time to time. They'll give money to these economic hubs in certain cities or states to invest into their economies. And the way that they're investing this is they're creating an entrepreneurial hub. So the funds will establish a business incubator and accelerator that will be called the hub. Here in East, East Liverpool, Ohio promotes entrepreneurship, focusing on art, entertainment, and hospitality sectors, dedicated space for entrepreneurs to collaborate and grow their businesses. According to this media release, it was the, I believe it's the newspaper that is in East Liverpool or in that region that I read at. But essentially, it's a dedicated space for these entrepreneurs to go, work, collaborate, work on ideas with other entrepreneurs, and uh, start their businesses. And they don't have a dedicated space yet, which is funny. The SBA still gave them six hundred fifty thousand dollars, but they're likely to um, start at a space at Kent State University, and then uh, until they find a permanent location, and then they can start from there. Hopefully, they can get something on their, you know, Market Street or, or Main Street, whatever that Main Street is in their downtown area of their community. I think that would be great because that's where you. A lot of these small towns have had a huge hit, you know, ever since um, we were talking about this earlier in the video, but you know. A lot of small businesses rely on the holidays to get by. That's where they really make their money. And ever since Walmart, Amazon, ever since those bigger companies, they've taken away a lot of small business retail and it's really suffered for these main streets and market streets throughout the U.S., especially in the Midwest. 
you add on top of that, a lot of manufacturing jobs that have been gone over the last 40, 50 years. So these small uh, cities have really suffered. And I think it's interesting that they really want to focus on arts and entertainment and uh, hospitality because a lot of these small towns now being from Kentucky, I've noticed that they've made a comeback because in the bourbon industry, a lot of people are now coming into Kentucky. They're spending money here. They're spending a little time, usually a weekend getaway or a couple of days where they go to the racetracks. So these smaller towns have benefited from the bourbon trail because there's a lot of money getting poured into the bourbon industry. And then they also want to go places to eat and bars, you know, smaller hotels, things like that. They want to have a nice little charming town that they can go visit. So I think that's good that they're focusing on that. They said that this town, you know, 50, 60 years ago had a lot, you know, a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. There's a lot of small businesses and they, they're trying to get back to that. So, you know, $650,000 and I'm not sure how they're going to invest that you know, year over year, how they're going to, are, are they going to add this into part of their budget with the city? Or are they going to charge entrepreneurs of some type of rate to, to go use this space? I'm not sure, but again, I think the idea is there. It's just now, how are they going to execute this idea to help spur growth and business into this small town that's clearly suffering? So, oh no, I think it's a good idea. I just need to make sure that we have the, the right plans in place to actually spur economic growth to help downtown. I mean, you always Another uh, similar idea in Edison, New Jersey, they're giving out 20 small businesses, uh, $5,000 in grants each. So a total of $100,000 in grants. It's done by the Edison Chamber of Commerce and Optimum Business under the Lifting Up Small Business in Edison. So that's the name of the program. But again, uh, we're seeing these all over the country, these small grants for small businesses to uh, liven up the, the downtown area to help spur economic growth for small businesses because again, small businesses employ nearly half of the U.S., and so uh, the, the better that small businesses are doing, the better the economy is doing, the, the better these communities are doing. So again, I think it's a great idea. Hopefully it stirs up the right economic movements for Edison, New Jersey, and they can thrive from it. I'm moving on Shopify Capital. Again, they're now offering eligible Shopify businesses up to $2 million in funding without credit checks, which is huge. So but I've seen this, I know into a QuickBooks, they, they go up to 250000 but Shopify and these other companies that have uh, payment processing have the retail stores for their customers. It's all built into one platform now. So they're really handling not only their, their lending aspect, but the retail aspect. And then also now I believe the financing, like you can actually they quit Shopify. So it's huge that they're allowing, you know, they're increasing their limits for these uh, small business owners. All right. And also one, one other note on this. They have new monthly cost loan structures. So I know with Shopify, a lot of times, like you take a deal, you take a loan out and then they take X percentage of the revenue every single day. So maybe it's 10, 15%, whatever you agree to with Shopify. So now what it seems like is this, some of these, I guess this new loan up to $2 million now, it's just on a monthly, it's a monthly payment. I'm not sure if it's a fixed payment or if it, it's again, a percentage, whatever you agree upon. But again, needless, you know, needless to say, it's, just a, it's, it's a big way for these small business owners to be able to access more credit from Shopify themselves. And then lastly, uh, a cool story about the Sacramento Kings and 11 Sports Media. Uh, they launch a program to support local small businesses in Sacramento, California. So the two are launching the Kings Small Business Program, and it's aimed at fostering growth and amplifying the work of small businesses in the Sacramento region. Uh, they say it's going to create tailored marketing and activation opportunities, ensuring maximum impact regardless of in-house resources. Uh, the Kings will also provide branding, branding during home games, giving the uh, small businesses exposure as well as their home website and social channels. So they are, they're doing 40 businesses. They're going to work with 40 businesses since it's the Sacramento Kings 40 year anniversary of coming to Sacramento. I looked up a little bit on 11 sports media. It's pretty cool idea what they do. And they have partnerships with, I believe it was the Falcons. And let me look it up here real quick. You all can look it up to 11 sports media. They're based out of, I believe it's London, England. Let's see here if it pops up. But they work with all the pro franchises here in the U.S. The Jets, the Bucks, Saints, uh, New Jersey Devils, South um, hockey team. So they work with a lot of teams already in pro sports. And now they're working with Sacramento. I think it's a great idea because you know, one of the big things that I always hear is that the, the largest, you know, the big corporations are the ones helping fund these, 
you know, these pro franchises or at least, kept, you know, helping them keep in the, in the green as far as selling tickets or doing advertising. Obviously the TV deals are out of control now in a good way. And whereas like 20 years ago, a lot of these corporations were helping. So now, now they're, they're looking to partner with these small businesses to obviously in small business. We went over earlier, they employ half the working force in the U S and so it's important to get these small businesses involved. Small businesses are inherently more concerned about the community. They want the community to thrive. So I think it's great that they're partnering up, partnering up with pro franchises to get them more involved versus just going over, you know, the, the fortune 500 companies or bigger corporations that are you know, less in, involved about the community. A lot of times they they'll move out of town too. Right. So small businesses are, are small business owners, you know, they they've lived in the community a lot of times or been as many generations have been in that city. So they want to see their sports teams thrive as well as the community. So I think it's great that they're partnering up and they're using this company that has obviously done it before in other uh, pro franchises, but that's it for today. Uh, thanks for stopping in. <laughs> Excuse me. Thanks for stopping in. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more exciting news. Thank you.